Hey there, Rebecca here, your Vibe Mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. I had a question pop up for, from someone asking about what happens when we detach from our bodies and how do we undo some of that. Um, I talk a lot about following your bliss and, and how our joy is our compass. And I realize it's a really good question of what, what if we don't know what brings us joy? What if we don't even really feel anymore because we've become so detached from our bodies? And I, my heart goes out to anyone feeling this. Um, it does because I know how it feels. Um, I have mentioned in many of my videos before, but it bears repeating, I'm a feeler. Um, sometimes words are difficult because I just have been a feeler my entire life. I almost feel like... There may have been another lifetime where words were not necessary, that it was a communication otherwise, but that's besides the point. My point is I'm a very strong feeler and life was very difficult and unbearable for many, many years. And oftentimes when we get to a place where we've just had enough, our nervous system is taxed, our, our cup runneth over and not in a positive way, there's something called the diathesis model, um, essentially, it's it's uh, likening our bodies to a cup of water, and we all have the same size cup, and we all start with some water in our cup every day, and the water fills up as we, we experience stress and challenging situations, and then we, we reduce our water either through exercise, time with friends, a, a massage, meditation, sleeping, rest, whatever it is. That, that should go down on a regular basis. For some of us, it never goes down. And we either weren't taught how to do that when we were young or the number of situations that we dealt with um, growing up were just too great that there was never any space or time to empty out our cup. Whatever the reason is, there comes a point where you're just spilling over all the time and it's not sustainable. Nobody can live in that state. And so what you've done or what you have to do, what I had to do was disconnect. I had to stop feeling. And um, as a young child, that meant running away from home. Um, I lived on my own at 16. I had my own apartment. By 17, I was working three jobs, sleeping every other night to graduate high school my senior year. Um, but that meant that I was removed from a physically abusive family and that I felt more safe. And so we will resort to very extreme um, situations, certainly drugs and alcohol, any kind of addiction, whether it's sex addiction or social media or shopping or food, or it, there's some very unique and, and different addictions out there, but in, in odd ways, it meets the need of numbing out or taking away that pain in some way. And so a, a disconnection from your body when you stop feeling is, is a survival mechanism. And it's come to a place where you, you just can't feel anymore because it's too much. And so know that you have to be very, very gentle with yourself, that there's nothing, no amount of blame, especially blaming yourself is going to help, even blaming anyone else. You are where you are now. You cannot change the past. All we can do is be here now because this is the only moment of creation we have. Depression will come from the shoulda, woulda, couldas about the past and anxiety will come worrying about the future. What am I going to do? How am I going to prevent this? Is it going to happen again? None of that is going to empower you to make a change or to fix it. Only here and now. And I understand that's very, very difficult for someone who is in a survival mode perpetually. Your nervous system is literally fried out. For me, it felt like I had my finger in a light socket every day, all the time. And anybody who um, disagreed with me, criticized me, in some way insinuated that I was wrong or bad or disliked me, it, it sends that the system into, into panic again. And it's like, I've got to fight. I've got to fight all the time. And, and for me, I even feel that in my stomach right now. And I'm, you know, I'm reliving some of those emotions. That's that power center of like, I don't have control over this. I can't, I don't have power. I've given my power away to this situation. And I have to be careful to stay on task here because there's so many different facets to this. But 
The nervous system is going to need to be calmed. There are many exercises out there on how to calm the nervous system. One of my favorite go-tos is when I kind of feel this starting to, to fire up, which I am right now, so we can do it together, is look around the room and, and think about when you are, um, or if you were, when we were, um, out on uh, the Saharan desert or whatever, and we had to, to make sure that we were safe, you check your environment. So use your eyes to look around you and scan the perimeter of the room and check every corner and every facet and just keep doing it until you feel the system start to calm. For me, I take that deep breath. I can feel the release in my shoulders. I've got tingles in my body. Um, you can feel the nervous system start to calm down. Another one is rubbing. Um, lotion is excellent. Put lotion on your skin and just kind of pet yourself, right? Um, think about things that you would do if you were in the jungle and knowing you were safe or things you would do if you were in the jungle and there was a predator. So the things that you do if there were a predator are going to exacerbate your system, right? So if you're you're stressing out, you're making a huge to-do list, you're telling yourself you're going to be late, you're worried about who's going to be angry with you or how you're going to solve whatever problem you have on your plate, all of those things are going to right, exacerbate your issues. You're going to have to do a lot less of those things and a lot more of the calming things. Take a nap, make some soup, take some vitamins, make a green juice, all those ways that tell yourself, I'm safe, I love myself, I'm going to care for myself. I highly, highly recommend um, adrenal support. Um, there, there's a couple brands out there. I, I will try to find links for you for the description box. Um, B vitamins, B complex vitamins. Now, and I, <laughs> I, I love my juicing community. So if there's anybody watching, I know the the beliefs around supplements, and I have heard and for a time believed that supplements were completely worthless. But I will tell you this from my own personal perspective, having gone through adrenal. It, I know adrenal fatigue is not the technical term, and even that's under debate, and I hate all the, the intricacies of this conversation, but it makes sense, and people understand what I'm saying when I say this. So if your nervous system is fried, your adrenals are tired, B-complex vitamins do help. They helped me. They worked wonders. Everybody's different. Every body is different, and so it may work for you. It may not. You're going to have to work through some of that. I, if you can juice oranges all day long for 21 days straight and only have orange juice, go for it. It worked wonders for me. I don't have that kind of time and B-complex uh, supplements worked amazingly. So anyways, I'm recognizing my juicing community. I love you guys. Uh, fruit is always best. Um, <laughs> from there, um, you need to do a lot of uh, inner child work, um, a lot of self-love, self-care, meditation, um, some shadow work as well, because we need to understand that we are creators and we are creating our reality. Certainly there is the collective factor, but that does not remove, we have a fruit fly saying hi, that does not remove our responsibility and that we are able to create a safe place within this collective creation where we are guarded and, and protected from out there. Um, you can do this. You can heal your body physically, heal your mind, heal your, heal your emotional body, and come back to the heart. The heart is probably the best place to start. Um, I have to say that carefully because there's so many good places to start, but the heart is really, really critical. The heart is going to help you start to calm the nervous system. It's going to help, help to regulate all of your bodily functions. Um, check out Heart Math, Heart Math Institute. Um, and they have a ton of science on how if you can focus on your heart, you're going to start to regulate your brain waves, your nervous system, your digestive system, um, all those things. Um, so focus on the heart, do lots of heart opening meditations, um, heal uh, your lower um, chakras. This is something I should have said earlier. So when we are in that that place where we can't feel and we've detached, we literally have detached from our bodies. We have detached from, I'm showing you the lower chakras. Um, obviously our root chakra is our safety. And so we don't feel safe. So we've pulled up from there. And uh, the solar plexus where our power center is, we don't feel that we have power anymore. So we've pulled up from there. 
And I know for me, I, I was very um, heady, you know, in my head, if that's probably not quite the right, heady is not the right word, but very much in my head, um, you know, very connected to source. I, I just wanted to go home, right? I want to live up here. It's way too uncomfortable down here. Um, but unfortunately, we came to this plane um, to learn lessons, which likely have to do with taking our power back and being safe in this body and being grounded. We have to be grounded no matter what, unless you're ready to leave this physical body. We have to learn to work with the lower chakras and reground and, and fully embody the entire body and take our power back and start creating a life that we love, that is safe, that is comfortable, where we can feel our feelings again. Um, you should, and I don't like the word should, so I'm going to redo that. It is possible for every single person to get to a place where the predominant emotions in their life are of a higher vibration, love, joy, peace, happiness, calmness, content, predominant. And I don't just mean 51% of the time we can, every single person can get to a place where we feel at, at peace, safe, comfortable, happy, in joy and bliss 80 to 90 percent of the time. Yes, challenges will come and even those can be enjoyable. It's it's not the situation, but how we perceive the situation. It's not the story, but how we interpret the story. It's not anything outside of us. It is how we handle it internally. And so we have to start taking responsibility for our internal world. Now, I'm going to say this carefully, and I don't usually tell all of my stories at once because they're just too much, but I want you to understand. <laughs> it gets hard before I even say it. Um, I, had a phys I had a father who told me I was a sinner in guilt and shame pretty much every day of my life. Um, for the 15 years I, I lived with him, um, there was then sexual abuse. There was seclusion and isolation in the church where I went to a school that was 12 kids and there was one other child my age. I walked from my house to the church across the sidewalk. There was no TV. There was no movies. There were no radio shows. Um, you know, moving into older adult life um, or teenage years, there was physical abuse. Then beyond that, yeah, like I said, I moved out at 17. I was on or 16. I was out on my own. Um, you know, there was certainly ample relationship issues and men who are willing to take and and not give and not love and nurture. Um, there was certainly drug and alcohol addiction to cope and deal with those things, extreme depression and anxiety. Um, it's a litany. And my only point is I want you to know that I am living proof you can get out of it no matter what it is you have the power and you have the ability and I can help you if you reach out more than just a comment. But regardless, I'm going to keep showing up for you and I'm going to keep being here for you and I'm even going to do some free pop-up Facebook groups. So just connect with me if you want to get in there. But you need help. You need support. You need you need support. You need love. You need connection. And that connection can help to start open up those channels of healing and feeling. And just remember, neuroplasticity is a real thing. Yes, you may have these dendrites in the brain, the physical structures that are literally developed from traumatic experiences, and then the thought processes, the perspective, perspective we choose, and the story we tell ourselves. And I'm not minimizing any kind of trauma. I, I'm sure it gets even worse than my story. I know it does. And I, I, I cannot express how much my heart hurts for anyone who has dealt with anything I've dealt with or greater, but you have to take responsibility. And that's, that's the best thing I can say to you and is said with so much love, but you have to bootstrap it with love, <laughs> love for yourself and love from support, whether it's me or someone else. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I could go on and on about this all day start doing some meditations, you know, if it's chakra healing, if it's inner child work, if it's um, trauma healing, um, if it's heart opening, all of those are great places to start and all of them will start to lead you tor towards the right place. Um, yeah, take care of your physical body, take care of your mental body, get help and support, get a hug, you need a hug. Remember that heart connects with someone when you 
when you hug someone, you you literally are, are connecting with their heart. And interestingly enough, the, the heart's uh, electromagnetic field is thousands times greater than the brain. And that's why it's really designed to run the show. And so we need to get into our heart, into our body and out of our head and start grounding. Grounding meditations are another great one. So I hope that helped. I probably will do another video because this, is, like I said, was just impromptu. I really wanted to respond to your comment. I've been thinking about you. So just know that I'm sending as much love as I possibly can through this video and um, there'll be more. I love you. Take care.